I'm sorry. I didn't notice you there. I was just making my call to Cthulhu. That's right, friends. This is your main man, Z, and I am here to give you a good rant. A great rant. Because, my lord, I love me some love, death, and robots. My lord. This season, season three, could be, in my uh, humble opinion, the best yet. And why? Because we've got some Cthulhu done right. Some Lovecraftian horror that makes you feel... So warm, fuzzy, and mind-meltingly good inside. It's been a long time, folks, since we've seen some good Lovecraftian horror. For those of you who are not fans of H.P. Lovecraft, I highly recommend that if you are steeped in horror and you really want something that's going to pack a, a wallop, check out some H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, he is the grandfather, godfather, father of cosmic horror where it's the unknowable the unfathomable something so horrific that it might just make you go insane and here we have a great depiction in love death and robots in fact there were several of them and i just wanted to point it out and give my love and appreciation in fact uh david fincher directed his first animated film and he wanted it to feel like alien and my what a great it's it's so great I, I i forget what it's called let's see here it's called bad draft bad traveling and um yeah david fincher 40 years in the business three-time oscar nominee uh he's done everything he's done seven the social network house of cards mind hunter but now he's doing animation and he's working with tim miller who you may know from deadpool and uh Terminator. We don't talk about the Terminator movie that he made. I think the man's mind may have melted just a little bit from being in Hollywood too long, but clearly there's still some more stories to tell. This is just great. It's about the, the his story, Bad Traveling in particular, is about a uh, a seafaring ship that hunts sharks and is preyed upon by a giant. Uh, like sea crustacean type thing <clears throat> and I like to think of it like in the vein of Lovecraftian horror this unknowable creature that has a mind of its own and unknowing horror and they're forced to make a decision that is unpalatable to everyone so how does this crew get through it and uh, just amazing voic acting I think Troy Baker is the lead character and wow this is great I really enjoyed it I really thought it was, was I, I mean, some of this in Love, Death, and Robots, the CGI that you're seeing is just so phenomenal. It's so on point. It's just so great. I just I, I just loved it. Absolutely so cool. So great. Um, all of them, several of them are really, really good. Uh, like I said, it features Troy Baker, who you may know from The Last of Us or Bioshock Infinite. In the leading role of a, he plays a weary seaman who must confront this terrifying crustacean. And it's based on a Neil Asher short story. But it's just amazing. Like, it's so great to see this type of horror done right. We haven't seen anything this good in so long. I'm telling you, go out there, watch it. You're going to just be blown away. It's very horrific, very graphic, very disgusting, but just absolutely phenomenal. I can't tell you how great it is. It's just so good. I just absolutely loved it. And the, the the CGI is just so amazing. There's some other really, really great stories in this one, too. In fact, let's uh, just go and, and show you a couple of them. We'll do a full-length review on our audio podcast and our, our live stream. But I just wanted to, to hit this one first. Uh, this one's a great one. It's called The Pulse of the Machine or something like that. Just another good one. I really liked it. I really like the moral and uh, like this. These ones make you think a little bit more. This is the one that David Fincher did, the uh, the bad traveling, which is about a ship that takes on a uh, really nefarious passenger who has much horror in store for all of them. Uh, there's a tiny uh, apocalypse one, which I thought was good. This one was good with the swarm. 
This one, Jabari. I absolutely love this one. I don't even know it's CGI. I don't know what's going on here, but it was absolutely phenomenal. It's a little long, but it's a great tale of, of the siren. The other one I really wanted to highlight, and I, I, I need to... Uh, here, it's this one. I believe it's called... Let's take a look here. What's the article? Uh, people wanted to explain in Vaulted Halls Entombed. What a great title. Clearly taken right out of Lovecraft. So we've got something just phenomenal here. This one it really made me think... Uh, and I love it because it, it was it, it subverted my expectations here. They, they previously had one about like Afghani soldiers and it was about shapeshifters. And I think that was from season one. This one was a little bit different where you had characters who are they they're following they're on a mission and they go into this cave. And originally you're thinking like, oh, it's kind of like Stephen King horror. Like, I don't know what's going on here. It's kind of cool, but I wasn't like super thrilled about it. Until they opened into, they they go further down into this tunnel. And there's still a little bit of spoilers here. But I think it helps me illustrate the point. Because these are all very short stories. You have these soldiers and, and they're being attacked. And they don't understand why. And they keep pushing forward because their mission, you know. And they want to get this done. And what's so cool about this is once you go through the entire journey. And you think back, like, why are there such vicious things guarding you know, why were they preventing them from going into this tomb? Why would they stop them? So, like, wh why would these creatures, these monsters, these little spiders that are trying to to eat them? But once they get through it, you know, because it, it's interesting. First, they go through, through the cavern, and there's these ravenous cave spiders. And they're like, oh, they're eating people, right? And then they get further in. And then there's these, like, almost mechanical spiders that are just, like, tearing people to pieces. Well, you move even further into it and you find yourself in front of a necropolis. And the necropolis has these statues and there's chains and this there, you hear whispers and there's this something down there and, and they eventually meet this elder god and it's taken... I mean, it's clearly, in, it's clearly Cthulhu. Like, it's got all the eyes, the tentacle mouth, the wings, and it's speaking to them through their minds and telling them to release them. And what sets upon them is horror and madness. And it's just so, so cool to see something like this done where, you know, no normal human can have a conversation with Cthulhu. It's just so impossible to understand that it melts your mind. And just beautiful. Really great to see this. I uh, just, I thought it was fantastic. And I know people do, will struggle a little bit to understand it and understand the morality. But it's just cool. It's just, it's just cool to see this done and done right. Um, all of them. This is the best season I've seen. There was a couple funny ones, but it doesn't take as many weird side. Cut this this season of of Love, Death, and Robots. Just absolutely phenomenal. It looks like it's going to be a hit. A lot of people are talking about it. I loved it. I hope you love it. You check it out. If you want to talk a little bit more here about Lovecraft, or you want to hear anything about it, a there's some great channels that do Lovecraft stuff. Uh, Mr. H, I think, does readings of Lovecraft. I think the channel's called Mr. H Reviews. But I'm a huge Lovecraft fan. I've read every single book. I was really, I've done a couple videos about it. I actually did a video right here where we talk about the potential of the future of the uh, Mountains of Madness. So Lovecraft Horror, you want to talk about it? You want to come here? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you if you like it or if you are too scared. If you have wet the bed or you are a little nervous, it makes you sweat a little bit. Let me know below. Do you want to hear more about Lovecraft and horror? Because I am a giant fan. I have all the books read them all numerous times big giant fan so anyway be sure if you like this type of content like subscribe give us that thumbs up we do all sorts of random stuff here we like to talk about pop culture we like to talk about books movies tv video games all sorts of great things we love to talk about the eldritch horrors here but you can catch us in our full-length audio podcast on anywhere you catch podcasts like stitcher spotify itunes all those great places and more Catch our videos on Rumble and here on YouTube and catch other content. We do a full-length live stream of our full-length audio podcast on Friday nights, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you want to talk to us directly, check us out on Instagram, orc underscore you. So that's enough from me. I want to hear from you. Tell me what, did you like Love, Death, and Robots? Did you think this was the best season? I certainly did. I was a little disappointed after season two. So this was a great, great move in the right direction. 
Anyway, that's enough from me. Let's hear from you as I go on to the next one. Bye.